when the spark of an idea doesn't go out, it's, it's an internal belief. You really do have a belief that this should work. You have such an extraordinary, adventurous story to tell us, but let's start at the beginning. You were the son of immigrants, started in your father's company in construction and development. What, what got you into the hotel business? <laughs> well, I think, um, I think most of our lives are really uh, circumscribed by what, what I call chance events, opportunities that arise out of coincidences. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as you say, I was in the building business. That's what I grew up knowing. That's what I was going to do. Construction was my, call it expertise. Well, I was asked to build a small motel for a friend of mine, and I should, sure, it's, but to me it was just a job. You know, I'm trying to make a living at this point in time. And um, He and his wife had sold their business and were investing in this little motel on the outskirts of Toronto, They're going back a long way now. So this is on the crossroads of the Queen Elizabeth Highway and Highway 27. So it's in the middle of nowhere. And uh, so he built this little small motel. I didn't think anything of it. But what surprised me was its success. So I thought if something like that could really work here, wouldn't the idea be something that might work Better if it was in a location in the middle of the city. So that started me on this journey to try to build that concept. And I called it a motor hotel. Mm -hmm. So the idea was the motel concept and marrying it with what a hotel was, which motels were just no service. You drove up, you walk into your room. Hotels, of course, had all the other amenities. So that's the way it started. This was only going to be a real estate deal. I had no intentions at all that this was going to be a, a business that I was going to go into. It was just a good idea. I thought I would build it and probably sell it and go on to other things. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a five-year challenge because I thought it was a good idea, but not many other people did. Uh, but what happens in just listening to that program, when the spark of an idea doesn't go out, it's, it's an internal belief. You really do have a belief that this should work. Yeah. So it gives you the ability to persevere and move on with it, which I did. So after a lot of skepticism, knocking on doors. Now remember, <coughs> I'm trying to make a living. So this is my nighttime job, going out and trying to convince people to put some money into it, because I didn't have any money. Well, finally did cobble together enough money to get it built. It, was a, it, just, it just took off, great success. And I thought, gee, this is not bad. So I would try a second. And the second was exactly the same thing, a concept that was very different. It was on the outskirts of the city. But I thought that creating like a resort within the city. So it was built as a resort hotel, but it was still a business destination. So that was the second hotel, and really what changed me and my sort of started me on a path that where I am today was the third hotel that we were fortunate to be able to get the opportunity to build a hotel in London, England. And that hotel, to this day, is probably the most important hotel we will ever build because it set the course uh, for me personally to decide I would try to make this a career, the <laughs> hotel industry. And that model that we built in London, England and opened in 1970 is the model that started Four Seasons on the one path we have stayed on and focused on at the top end of the market. So that's got me going into the hotel business and the rest is history. So let's go back to that, that Motor Hotel, 1961, at the corner of Carlton and Jarvis. It's a pretty rough neighborhood at the time. You described oh. it as a hangout for gangsters, hookers, and street people. Uh, did that matter? Good, good, or did good, the, good the, description. <laughs> did the hotel turn the neighborhood around? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't at all. But uh, 
you know, we know the area, we know the city, so we stay away from it unless you're going down for that part of the world, the business. Uh, and I knew that, that people didn't really understand cities when they came to them. But I, I had, through over the years, building the first hotel, uh, came across, you know, some ideas. And what I figured we could do, we needed, we, we were there because that was the cheapest land in the city. And we need a, a lot of land because we had free parking surrounding the motel. So we built the hotel with an interior courtyard where all the rooms faced in, overlooking a beautiful garden and swimming pool. So it was like an oasis. So the streetscape and the activity that was going on on the main street really didn't interfere with the operation. And it was a charming, aesthetically, you know, beautiful little motel. Um, so it didn't matter, because you can, as we've done many times since that time, you can create a destination mm -hmm. if it suits the individual traveler's needs in terms of location and if the product is something they want. So uh, it was a matter of being able to buy enough land mm -hmm. uh, with very little money. But you opened the hotel in 1961 yep. with a charitable event with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. I'm sure that wasn't the norm of how, how these things opened in those days. Well, um, remember we built with borrowed money and we didn't have any money to really get started in marketing the hotel. And remember, I don't know anything about the business. So I hired somebody who did know how to run the hotel, but we figured that if we could uh, appeal to the community, mm -hmm. city of Toronto, that they would at least talk about what they see. And that was the purpose of creating a charitable event, mm -hmm. bringing in a lot of high society uh, from the city. Um, <laughs> they question going down to Jarvis Street, so do they need a, you know, some security or not? Uh, <laughs> but they did come. And the papers read, you know, wrote up about it. Fortunately, across the street from where the hotel, motel was built was the fledging CBC, the beginning of Canada's television industry. So we had, you know, good location. Well, that gave us a good jump start. And in order to, you know, people in the city don't usually use your hotel. They use the dining room, food and beverage, catering. So we decided we would make the food and beverage operation our showcase. That is what we would be able to demonstrate to the people who you came to the hotel mm -hmm. who we were. And that worked perfectly. So we had a very successful restaurant. The bar was across the road from CBC, so it was, you know, a great hangout. So we used the marketing strategy without spending money to get the people to come to the hotel for their purposes, which is going to the dining room, etc. cetera. Um, and fortunately, shortly after opening the hotel, um, as I said, we were across the road from the CBC, a young lady came in and we had an in, uh, you know, pool in the inter courtyard, a young lady walked through the lobby and undressed at the swimming pool, dove into the swimming pool, swam across, came out, picked up her clothes, and walked naked through the lobby across the street back home. <laughs> we did not plan that. <laughs> but the newspaper the next day, there was a book out called you know, The Naked and the Dead. It said, The Naked and the Fled. <laughs> well, the, you couldn't get into the restaurant. Everybody's waiting for her to come back again. <laughs> so you get these sort of coincidences that allow you to, you know, market your product. 